Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Eating Real with Change Food. Today we have here Justin Johnson, who is the owner and president of Sustainable Kitchens. Oh. <laughs> Hi Justin. Hi there, how are you? Good, how are you doing this morning? Fantastic. It's early over there, isn't it? Uh, a little bit, it's about <laughs> nine o'clock. Okay, not too bad. Um, okay, so can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and about Sustainable Kitchens and what you've been up to lately? Sure. Um, so uh, Sustainable Kitchens is a um, uh, kind of a back to scratch food service transformation uh, consulting firm. So basically what we do is we work with any kind of, um, I hesitate to say just institutional food service, but uh, that is kind of the area that we focus on primarily, but really any kind of food service. So that would include restaurants and uh, hotels and so forth. But we find that the biggest need for what we do is in the non-commercial or institutional segment, like um, hospitals and schools and uh, retirement homes and places like that, that historically serve, um, as I always like to say, the worst food on the planet. <laughs> um, so we go in there and we basically get rid of all that frozen processed pre-made food and we develop uh, menus and recipes and training and all of the operational systems and policies and procedures. When I say operational systems, I mean uh, production sheets and order guides and all of the, you know, kind of the, the things that, that make the food actually work on a consistent day-to-day -day basis because as much as, you know, at the end of the day, it is about the food. If you just hand people a bunch of menus and recipes without a roadmap for how to actually uh, scale that up and, and prepare it in a consistent way, uh, then it's just kind of like water off a duck's back. So um, really it's, uh, it, it's kind of, it's almost like throwing away an old operation and building a new one uh, from nothing. Cool. Um, so are you more on like, the business operational side or have you also been cooking? Well, um, I myself personally uh, was a chef for 20 years. Um, so um, I, I do cook. Um, however, I, I would say that my, my time is, is pretty evenly split between the administrative side, the, the business management side, and then the actual like uh, client and um, kind of account management side. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I get in there in the kitchen and, and cook with, with people too. So it's when you're a small company, you kind of have to do a little bit of everything. Um, and when you don't have like, uh, I guess a, a devoted person to every single aspect of what you do, whether it's um, filling out an Excel spreadsheet or, um, writing a pamphlet or a flyer or doing uh, marketing or writing an employee manual or whatever it is, there's all sorts of things that crop up that you realize, well, we don't really have that and we don't have a person to do it. So I'm going to have to figure it out. And I think anybody that, um, you know, owns a business kind of, uh, you know, knows that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just kind of, you know, part of the, uh, part of the, I guess the, the growing pains of, of being a young business and, and um, you know, figuring out what you do well, because when you start a business, you sort of have, you know, lofty goals and dreams of, you know, changing the world. And then all of a sudden you get in there and you realize um, that you can't be uh, a jack of all trades. You have to focus, you know, on a few things that you're really exceptional at and, yeah. and really just try to get it as good at those things as possible. Yeah. Um, so you're a very busy person. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> probably probably too busy sometimes. Oh, well, that's good and bad. Um, so obviously it's the holiday season and you shared a really, I think it's a really cool recipe with us. Um, it's coffee roasted venison tenderloin. Yes. So venison, for anyone who doesn't know, is deer meat, right? Yeah, so the, the reason I, I gave you that one was because, of course, I'm uh, here in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and this is deer hunting season, and uh, venison and, you know, deer meat is is um, is all over right now. Uh, obviously, it's a very seasonal thing, yeah. um, and, it's, and it's, you know, in some ways pretty specific to this region. So uh, mm -hmm. that was actually a dish um, 
that I had developed when I was the executive chef at Hotel Metro uh, here in Milwaukee. And just a good, simple, clean kind of dish. Um, you know, uh, we're big believers in, uh, you know, just maximizing the ingredients that you have without a lot of um, uh, extra unnecessary flavors or garnishes or, or whatever. It's, it's really just about making whatever that special ingredient is uh, taste as good as it possibly can with, you know, uh, minimal manipulation, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that was a dish that, that we did at the, the hotel there and it was very popular. And, and when I, whenever I can get my hands on some, some venison at this time of year, I always like to do that one. Yeah. So um, that's cool. Cause like, well, you, you said it's sim kind of a simple recipe, but when I look at it, the first thing I noticed was that you use coffee beans. Um, yeah. So maybe I just don't cook a lot or I don't cook with meat a lot, but that was, that was kind of new to me. Um, so what, what's like the coffee, obviously the coffee is for flavoring, but what's sort of the purpose of the coffee in the recipe? And also, is there a certain, uh, type of coffee that's best for cooking? Uh, no, I, I would say, you know, kind of the, almost in the same, uh, way that I would talk about cooking with wine. Just don't use something really expensive, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. uh, use something that's, that's relatively, um, I guess kind of a utility ingredient, something that is uh, mild and, um, you know, you don't, because you don't want to take like a really good quality coffee and mm -hmm. end up, you know, ruining it, it down. you know, because really what you're trying to get out of the coffee in that dish is uh, to impart a little bit of a, you know, kind of a coffee flavor to the meat, but then also adding a nice little crunch on the outside of, of the tenderloin sounds good so th there there isn't a particular I, I would just recommend you know something you know low acid and and uh, low body and, and relatively you know mild bean um and it just it wor really works well with how um i guess gamey venison can be and and how um you know kind of richly flavored it is you want a flavoring that's going to be able to stand up to the flavor of uh, the meat itself. Like if you were to, you know, uh, crust, uh, you know, like chicken or something with coffee, that wouldn't really be a good idea because chicken doesn't have a whole lot of flavor on its own, at least not a chicken breast. Um, and it's just going to taste like coffee. Whereas with the venison, um, th there are two kind of bold, strong flavors that stand up next to each other. And then, uh, you know, we kind of cut that with the acid and the fruitiness of, of the, of the berries. So the, just just the the flavor marriage all the way around is is pleasant. Cool. Never knew that. <laughs> um, so I was well. You said you're in Wisconsin, and um, maybe venison's more available there because more people may hunt. But I'm here in New Jersey, so I was wondering, like, if anyone was looking to make this, um, is there like a place you can go get? venison or um, you know a hunter like how does that yeah, work I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't really speak to the availability of it on the east coast but i would say that your best bet is probably to go to a butcher mm -hmm. um it's very i wouldn't say very but i would say it's relatively unlikely that you're going to find it in um like a chain grocery store you're probably going to want to go to a specialty meat shop or to a butcher or maybe just find uh uh, a friend or family member that hunts yeah. <laughs> and recently killed a deer. Yeah, I went to school in New Hampshire and my friend always had a uh, deer um, venison in our freezer and it was like so new to me. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really cool. Um, so do you have a favorite holiday dish in general that you make every year or like what's your favorite holiday seasoning or spice that you like to use? Um, I actually, I really love cooking during the holidays. I love all the flavors. I love, uh, cooking with things like nutmeg and cinnamon and, um, a lot of spices. And, um, I'm a big fan of, of any kind of like fatty braised meat. So even if it's, uh, like braised, uh, chicken thighs, like chicken dark meat or short ribs or, um, you know, just like a beef or a pork roast. I just, I really like those. I like cooking that food. Yeah. Um, 
So that would probably be a big thing for me. And my favorite thing to eat around the holiday uh, around the holidays has always been cranberries. You know, just yeah. uh, just straight up Wisconsin uh, cranberries that have been cooked down into a sauce with a you know whole whole mess of sugar and some star anise, and um, I could eat that. Um, I could eat that every day. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> um, okay, well, is there anything else that you'd like to share about anything? I don't think so. Thanks so much for, for taking the time to talk to me. Yeah, thank you again. And um, we will share this recipe with anyone who would like to make it. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Emma. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs> yep, you too. Bye-bye.